In this video, we're going to discuss the search object behavior. So here you see I have been thrown in a prison cell. Things aren't looking real good for possibility of parole. So I'm going to need to find my way out of this cell. Uh, the door is locked and it says find a key. So I'm just going to search around here. And we see, okay, we can search this body. So I'm going to press and hold E, which causes it to show the search bar. And then it says, okay, I found a antique silver key. So you can see it's right next to the corpse. I'm just going to click E to collect that. And then we can open the door and let ourselves out. So pretty cool. Uh, so let's take a look and see how that works. All right, so there's a lot going on here because we have a locked door right here. Um, so it is uh, it is locked. See, the checkbox is checked there, um, or unchecked, I should say. And we have the key sitting right here. But if we look at the key, the show at start of level is unchecked. So that's invisible to begin with, and I can't get a hold of it until I, until I activate it. And the way we activate it is with the uh, the search object behavior. So we have a dynamic object here. Physics on is a mobile yes. Um, we have the behavior attached, and the first thing we see is a prompt e to search. The content is what is it that we're going to find when we search this object. So we could receive ammo, and that's just going to be ammo for whatever weapon you have available to you um, so you don't want to use that if your player isn't going to have a gun like in this scenario the prisoner wouldn't be locked locked away with a gun so we wouldn't want to select that there is a health so you could pick up a health named item or nothing so i mean there is a possibility you're searching around and you just don't find anything uh, but in our case we wanted a named item um, and I just copied and pasted the name of this key, which is found here in that slot uh, named item right there. The quantity is just how many are you going to find? Obviously, we only need one key, so we set it to one. Uh, if we were doing ammo, for example, you'd maybe you'd s switch it to 10 or 15 or whatever it is that you wanted it to do. The search time is just how long is it going to take for that bar to, to dwindle down and you find the item. Uh, this is the text that you see when it's searching, and then this is the text uh, you see when it found the item, and it just says found, and then whatever the name of the item is. Um, so if you didn't want that to, to say antique key dash silver, maybe you just want it to be jail key or something like that, not only would you rename it here, but you'd also make sure that you rename it here so it matches. The noise range, which is really interesting, when you're searching around, you're making noise, presumably. Um, and this range indicates how long or how far away might a guard be and still hear you searching around. So pay close attention to that range because you want to make sure that if you intend for them to, to potentially alert a guard, then that's they're going to be within range of that, or if you don't want them to, then they're not going to be within range of that. Um, and then search trigger was turned out to be really important in this case, right? So in this use case, the key is right here within reach, um, and that key has to be logic linked to this door in order for it to operate the door, right? That's a requirement. That's just how keys and doors naturally work. So we have a logic link from the body to the key, and that's basically set oops, to activate other object. So you remember earlier I said that the checkbox on the key is unchecked, meaning it's invisible, it's inactive when the game starts. When I finish searching, search trigger is on, it, that activates the other object, which is the key, makes it visible, and then I can pick it up. Okay, so really important for this sort of scenario. 
And then of course you have your sound slots. I, I chose not to use any kind of sounds in this case, but you could uh, add audio to your searching if you wanted to uh, make it sound like it was rummaging through maybe a drawer or a box or something like that. All right, and that's it. That's what you need to know to make a searchable object in your game. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned anything new, please be sure to click the like button below. That helps out a lot. If you're new to the channel or if you just haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate it. It helps grow the channel and gets the word out about uh, Max. So please be sure to click the subscribe button as well. And if you'd like a, a notification whenever I post new videos, uh, just click the bell icon. It'll send you a notification every time a new video is ready for you. All right, and that's it. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.